Now, if you're one of the very few people that has watched one of my videos on my channel here, you'll know I talk mostly about news and politics. Mostly. I've talked about gun violence, I've talked about different mass shootings that have happened, and I very rarely talk about myself. But this time, it was a mass shooting. In Maine. At my workplace. So I'm going to talk about it. Now, I wasn't originally going to do a video on this, but a couple of other YouTubers and my boss actually convinced me to. So, uh, I feel like I have at least one little piece of context that I haven't seen in any of the other coverage. And I'm a news junkie, political news junkie. I watch and listen to news all day long, every day. Lots of like lefty YouTubers mostly. And it's been kind of a trip to watch all of my people that I watch all the time talk about my workplace. And mispronouncing the name, by the way. It's Schmeggies. I didn't name it. But anyway. Um, if you don't know, there's a mass shooting in Maine on uh, October 25th. And in Lewiston. Uh, at three different locations. Most of the media has only talked about two of them. I'm going to fill that in. Um, 18 people died. Over a dozen more injured. And, you know, you probably know about it by now. I'm going to give a quick timeline. There is a lot of conflicting accounts out there as to this guy's history. Um, but basically a 40-year-old white army reservist. I won't be saying his name on here. Um, uh, at some point earlier this year, he either threatened to shoot, I have notes by the way, that's what I'm looking at, uh, he either threatened to shoot up a National Guard base in Saco, Maine, uh, an hour and a half or so from Lewiston, or other accounts say that a fellow reservist or soldier uh, went to the authorities at the base and told people that he was worried that this guy was going to, quote, snap and commit a mass murder. I bet that guy's kicking himself now. Um, back in July, he spent two weeks in a mental health facility because he was hearing voices. Now, Maine doesn't have strict gun laws. Maine doesn't require background checks on all gun sales. There is no need for concealed carry permits. There is no restriction on open carry. There's no waiting periods. And there's no red flag law. There is a yellow flag law. It's a red flag law basically with extra steps. The gist of it is if you uh, know someone that you think might hurt themselves or others, you can go to the cops and tell them this. And if you can convince the cops and a mental health professional, and a judge, then the judge can order the cops to take a person's guns from them temporarily until a judge and a mental health expert says it's okay for this person to get them back. Uh, and there's a lot of confusion as to whether or not any of those steps were taken for this guy, but it doesn't look like anyone said anything. Uh, so on Wednesday, October 25th, around 7 p.m., uh, this guy walked into a bowling alley. Uh, walked in the door and just started shooting with what I believe to be an AR-15 or similar type weapon with a green laser scope on it. Um, started shooting. Walking around. He wasn't spraying. He was targeting people. I don't know if that he was targeting certain individuals or not it doesn't look that way but he was very carefully taking aim before he fired i've talked to multiple people that were there and at the other place saying that he was aiming for everyone's stomachs specifically um <clears throat> he left the bowling alley he drove about four miles to schmeggy's bar and grill where i was did the same thing basically walked in the door and just started firing And this is the part where I can tell what I saw. So I'm the cook. I was in the kitchen. I didn't see a single thing of this. 7 p.m. I'm in the kitchen doing my thing, cooking orders. Heard the first shot. Single shot. 
from what I found out later, he walked in the door with the gun. He immediately saw someone standing right near the door with their back turned, shot him in the back. And then just started aiming in on other people. That's when my two bartenders that were working that night ran out the back door. That's when he started firing in bursts. And that's when I realized kind of what was going on. I saw them run out the door along with a few other people, other customers. Uh, and that's when I got out. Um, I didn't really see anything other than one lady that had a uh, bullet wound to her shoulder. I saw... I was on the back of the building, hiding behind a wall, basically, with some other people. Didn't last very long, a minute or two. A lot of people were peeling out of the parking lot, and from what it looks like, he was one of them. I didn't know that at the time. Can't see the front door from where I was. Um, lots of people peeling out, screeching down the road, going over the curb, everything, trying to get away. And at some point in the middle of the shooting, I've heard conflicting reports about how this happened, but the power was cut. And so that enabled people to hide, like right next to this guy, as he walked around shooting the only light being his laser scope. Um, I've heard people say that they were literally just lying on the floor playing dead as he walked over them. Um, I'm a cab as hell, but I give the cops credit. The first cops rolled up in under two minutes. AR-15s in hand immediately ran in the building. Within ten minutes, as long as I could see down the street in either direction, there were cops. Patrol cars, trucks, uh, unmarked cars, personal vehicles... Mostly in uniform, some people not in uniform. Ambulances, fire trucks, everyone. It had to be 30 or 40 cops there running around with AR-15s, running in and out of the building. Uh, ambulances carrying people out. Cops just lifting people with their hands, carrying them out. Um, and this is when I decided I was good to kind of relax for a minute. This was obviously over. Cops didn't know if he was still in the building or not. Lights were, you know, power was still cut. They were still clearing the place. Um, this is when I pulled out my phone. Messages from everyone asking if I was okay. So I'm just texting, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay to everyone. And then I started hearing other people talk about this. I look on social media and find out that there was another shooting. And at the time, we didn't even know if the bowling alley happened first or if he went from our restaurant to the bowling alley, we had no idea. But it was only after a few minutes I heard over the cops' radios that there was another shooting at a Walmart distribution center two or three miles from the restaurant. And I saw, you know, a good handful of cops that were there just bolt back to their cars and peel off in that direction. And at this time... We didn't know if this was three separate shooters or one guy driving around, you know, so the cops realized that the place was clear at least. And at this point, and all the sort of witnesses that were there that weren't injured, myself included, they piled us into the back of an ambulance, all just standing up shoulder to shoulder, brought us to a um, safe location somewhere they could secure where we pretty much just hung out there with cops surrounding the place with AR-15s uh, about an hour or two, kind of talking to each other, all, you know, texting people, calling people, letting everyone know we're okay. And that's when the information started trickling in about how many people were, were killed. And uh, that's when there was an image released of the shooter, he was still out there. That's all we really knew. Um, and after a little while, <clears throat> they brought in some detectives and people from the FBI and ATF were already there uh, to take everyone's statement. And once you gave your statement, you could leave. Um, 
And it wasn't really until the next day we had a little more information. And uh, 18 people dead. Over a dozen injured. Um, eight people at my restaurant killed. Seven of them were customers that I didn't know. I recognized a couple of their faces, but I see their names on the order slips all the time. They're all regulars. And one person that worked there, Joey Walker, he was the GM. He actually, from what several people that were there said, he would have been okay had he not ran towards the shooter trying to stop him. But he was killed trying to do that. So, um, they didn't find this guy for three days. Uh, he drove to a boat launch a couple towns over where he abandoned his car and his AR, uh, leaving a note that it wasn't necessarily a suicide note, but it had like phone logins and bank information for his loved ones that might find it. So he knew he wasn't going to survive this. And then they found him uh, two days later, uh, self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. So this guy, like I said, 40 year old white army's army reservist and his social media, it's been taken down now. But he had TikTok, he had Twitter, he had Facebook, and it was full. A lot of people like scurried to kind of screenshot the stuff before it was all taken down. But he, uh, typical right wing stuff, you know. Nearly every one of these mass shooters is a right winger. Maybe someone wants to look into that. I don't know. But his social media was full of all this right wing stuff. You know, he followed Tucker Carlson and Jim Jordan and all, all these right wing media figures and politicians. Um, thought LGBTQ people just existing was like destroying the country. Conspiracy theories about the 2020 election being stolen. Uh, conspiracy theories about immigrants and, and about COVID vaccines and all this kind of stuff. So very typical of these mass shooters. Now the thing, here's the thing that I can add to this that hasn't been talked about. Um... This guy was a regular at both places. Um, uh, he, he was a regular at the bowling alley, from what I understand, and he was a regular at the restaurant. I didn't recognize his face. You know, I'm in the kitchen. I don't really see customers very much. But on most of the slips that I get for food orders, you know, um, there's names on those slips, and I recognize his name. He used to eat there once or twice a week. Uh, we at the restaurant, we have, uh, pool tables, cornhole boards, dart boards, a pinball room, and people come in and play on teams for all this stuff. And I guess he wasn't on one of the teams this year, but he used to play on the cornhole teams. And Wednesday night was cornhole tournament. So he killed people that he used to play with, people that he used to drink with. And, uh... I don't know that he specifically targeted anyone, but a little bit of context. He was a regular in both places. I don't know if he had any connection to the Walmart distribution center, but from what I understand, I don't know if they were always locked up tight or if they had heard about the shootings and locked up in case. But uh, from what I understand, he it, it, no one on the news has really mentioned that place because I guess he got there, couldn't get in fired a couple shots at the building, and then left. But for the next two days, uh, you know, everyone was getting the emergency alerts on our phones. The, the Practically the whole state was in lockdown. They didn't know where he was. They spent one whole afternoon, the headline was kind of funny, negotiating with an empty house that I guess he either did live in or used to live in or something uh, before they found him <clears throat> out in the woods. Um, so that's the, 
best little context I can add. Now this, this was the first mass shooting in Maine. And this was the, the first mass shooting with this many casualties since Uvalde. And, you know, something I've heard a lot from people in the area that were there and, and people that just live in the area is something that people hear every time there's one of these mass shootings. I never thought this would happen to me. I never thought this would happen here. You know, I thought this was a safe place. It was only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. Our politicians in this country, I hate the phrase on both sides, but on both sides, but if you look at the numbers, it is 90 something percent only the Republicans that the NRA just throws bags of cash at these people to not change gun laws, even though background checks, for example, universal background checks, closing the uh, background check gun show loophole. It pulls at like 90 percent among Democratic voters, Republican voters, independent voters. It pulls among it pulls that high around uh, for NRA members. Politicians won't do a damn thing because they're given all this money. It's another re just another reason why we need to get money out of politics. The FBI classifies a mass shooting as any instance with four or more victims. And going by that metric, the last few years, we've averaged two mass shootings per day. Uh... At this time, there has been 565, 565 mass shootings so far in 2023, according to the Gun Violence Archive. And I'm, I'm recording this, I waited a few days, I'm recording this five days after this one happened. And there's news today about another mass shooting in Tampa, 18 injured, two dead. So, of course, it's going to happen here, and it's going to happen here again, and it's going to happen everywhere. It's a matter of time. So, anyway, I'm going to steal the links from a uh, Facebook post from someone in the community that I saw with all the relevant GoFundMe pages for all the victims and victims' families, funerals and medical costs and all that. Um... None of it is for me. Just uh, go check them out if you can. There's a lot of them. And if there's any questions, uh, ask away. All my links are on my YouTube page here, all my Twitters and TikToks and Blue Sky Thread. All that stuff is there. If there's any questions about this, ask away. I'll do my best to answer. And... Uh, I guess that's it for now. Be safe out there.